One, two, three. Two, two, step. Step one, two.
growing up, uh, I wasn't into any specific kind of music. I kind of found music late. Uh, my parents had uh, a little bit of hair clacking in the house. Uh, that's pretty much it. You know, just your typical rental fair. But uh, one of my first uh, records was a Scorpion Love at First Day. So, I was like a little kid running around with some Billy Idol. I probably wouldn't be doing it, but be too bad I don't know what it was about it. But like, just uh, for me as me as a five year old, I was all about it. I grew up listening to a uh, 50s and 60s rock and roll. That was, was always in the car. And then uh, my first cassette dig was uh, Van Halen One, which my grandma had bought for me, and then immediately took away when she heard. Double the other kids, so yeah, that was it. And now you are. Yeah. I uh, I was about twelve, and my cousin was babysitting me, and he didn't feel like babysitting me anymore. He wanted to go out with his friends. He sent me down at his drum set, and I sort of just figured it out and. And he went out for like three or four hours, and when he got back, I was still sitting at the drum set doing my thing. That was literally my start, my first day in music. Kind of like I said, I do fucking around with drums. Just uh, sitting down behind a kid and realizing that, like, with like a little bit of, uh, you know, like with a little bit of coordination, you could start to replay the, the beats and the songs that you love. And it's sort of, huh? A lot, man. Anybody who can, anybody who can take what they're doing, the art form that they're doing, and uh, figure out a new way to do it. I want to hear something new. I want to see something new, something that hasn't been thought of before. So, a lot of filmmakers, you know, stuff like like filmmakers who make movies that are hard to put into a single genre. I think like Kubrick and like the weird shit that he made. A lot of people are creeped up by like Eyes Wide Shut. It was a creepy movie, but like. It, there's like a there's like a, an oddness in it that I really like identified with and so you know and I'll get on board with Val I'm all I'm all into um, you know Orwell and you know books and stuff like that Thank you. 
I know that cats and trades have come up with music, and the first time it presented down at, uh, at our studio, uh, and I heard it, I wrote the lyrics on the way home in the car. Uh, it was just something about the music that spoke to that story, um, kind of railing against the, uh, the fact that today so many uh, people attribute being me or uh, rolling over and not standing up for oneself to being the correct thing to do. That's kind of how they, or society says that you should behave. But um, in reality, I think the person who said to be Sean Harris here was just trying to convince themselves of that fact rather than reality. by many. Yeah, we all bring pretty different things to the table. I mean, I come from a lot of punk rock and jazz. Molly Cruz is one of my favorite bands. I know everyone else differs from me. So. I don't know, if you look to the band as a whole, it's got um, a metal element, <clears throat> but, it's, but it's, it's pretty accessible because of the, because of the vocal style, because of that vocal style. You know, it's, it's uh, songs that you can kind of dig your head into so you can get along with them because they're really, they're, they're catchy and dark at the same time. But then it's also, you know, so it's got the, the rock in there too, and it's just like a, a little, like, flavoring of, like, industrial and electronic and stuff and kind, of, kind of sprinkle it and make it a little bit more, a little bit more interesting. <clears throat> and whatever happens when you put those together. This is like a couple years ago, and he had like a the cutest fucking puppy you ever seen in your life. And originally we were we were called um, Show Thrower, and this guy took a gun and he held it the puppy head and he looked at us and he's just like, if you don't fucking rename your band Fashion Bomb like in the next ten seconds, I'm covering you with puppy juice. And so we're dog lovers. Yeah. And so, I mean, we were like, yeah, that's not that bad. I mean, that was like the Eurythmics, that's from like a Eurythmics song, so we decided to go with it. Serious. Who do you think Fashion Bomb is? And it's only about your moment. I think there's a little bit of Fashion Bomb in all of us. World domination. They wanted to be dominated. The world, no. Um, uh, originally, we just wanted to come out, make a big splash, played a, an exclusive show to kind of debut the band uh, right away. Sold out at a place called Underground Lounge, and then we uh, played a week later, I believe it was, uh, with Vile and uh, Nocturne at a, an event called Alka Holiday, and. Uh, it's like the world famous Cubby Bear in Wrigleyville, and uh, it was awesome. So we were out to make a splash right away. I thought we did that.
my uh, girlfriend at the time and her friend um, were all really, really, really picky about music. Like, you know, um, so she's like, I, I, we saw this new band and, uh, you know, I bet, you, I bet you'd like them. They got a lot of mojo. And uh, that was literally the word that we used. Um, it's not like an Austin Powers thing. It just means like, I don't know, it takes me, like I'd have to write a book to explain it. It means like it's deep. Uh, but they said I should check it out. I checked it out some, a couple times. The first two times I tried to see Fashion Bomb, um, I missed them because of the people I was with slowed me down. And so, like, I saw a god drug, like, at the tail end or whatever. And that was it. And then they were done. And then, uh, yeah. Uh, I, 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 bring, I brought friends to shows and, uh, um, Well, we do a lot of people in the industry that uh, help us with the MTV2 thing. Uh, we did our own self-produced video and forwarded it to the folks that we do over at MTV and uh, VH1. And they liked it, so I got played a few times. Um, and as with the industry, they discovered that we weren't on a major label yet and pulled it, uh, even though it was getting a good response. Um, the 94.7 The Zone Next Big Thing contest that we won. Uh, we did that early on as well. We thought it was a good way to get some ears on to our music. Uh, we ended up winning the contest. Uh, Sip competition. There was some good bands in that contest. Uh, but 94.7 The Zone was one of the uh, heavier rock stations in the area. Uh, one of the few, actually. And so we thought it was a good affiliation. We had a couple of the DJs really believe in us. And... Uh, from there on, the prize was to uh, get a development deal with a, a label at Hollywood Records who stepped up, uh, put some studio with a good producer. Liked our stuff, actually, but uh, even today, Hollywood Records is uh, owned by Disney, and uh, they didn't have artists that were like us. Uh, so it, it very much is a business, you know. They don't have, uh, you know, the artists that with, like, you know, you would go try and sell, you know, I don't know, microwave oven to McDonald's, you know, McDonald's sells hamburgers, you know, it just wouldn't make sense to sell microwaves there, you know, that's something for a big appliance retailer. We just didn't fit with their roster like the, you know, the Hannah Montana's and the, uh, uh, or, uh, kitty bands, so. I joined up in 04. I was originally trying out to be a second guitar player, but I ended up just replacing the first dude. Uh, yeah, I was I was in the band not even a month, and like literally I had two weeks I think, and they, they got the call on 24 hours notice. It's like, hey, can you guys open for Manson? Our our band fell off or whatever. The band we were gonna have to do it fell off. And so um, it was pretty cool. Luckily, I had uh, like rehearsed my ass off to um, to make sure that I beat out any competition or whatever anybody was going up against me. And uh, so I was already like ready to go. So it was, um, I was well prepared even though it was like 24 hours notice and I had been in the band for two weeks. So it was really fucking cool. It was, um, you know, definitely the, the biggest thing I'd been involved with at that point, for sure. So just kind of walking out there and seeing all these, all these fucking heads, you know. Um, a lot of those people had never heard us before. Um, and uh, Manson's people are, his fans are notorious for hating uh, opening act blew them off stage and stuff but they really uh, they really kind of took to us um, they, they're kind of there's a lot of this kind of in the beginning but as it like you know as it went on they kind of loosened up and people were juicing people started uh, people started pitting like motherfucker somebody uh, in one of our pits uh, uh, some guy got his nose broken his butt all over the fucking place um, it was crazy it was uh, we actually tired him out Yes. Yeah.
Jim Rocker uh, kind of a rant uh, about, um, you know, that's what the theme of the album, the end times take form in many different ways. Uh, and many different things contribute to the end times that's in here. So, depravity, it's certainly one of those times you look back at uh, history or ancient religion, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, were the prime examples that everyone will probably be familiar with, where debauchery and uh, self indulgence are about the end of their world, cities in this case. Uh, same thing with this planet, we're becoming more and more used to extreme acts of not only violence, but uh, self indulgence. And it's possible that this could be bring about the end of times. It's a point towards the end.
first. Sure. At first it does, uh, until people take time to listen to music, hear us talk, uh, you know, check out what the meaning behind our music really is. Uh, yeah, I mean, superficially, once again, people jump to judgment based on looks, sure. But we're going to maintain true to ourselves. And, uh, you know, if they do that, hopefully the people who take the time to look a little bit past the uh, initial first image, we'll see exactly what we're about. Very, they're very energetic, energetic. And, uh, very, I almost want to say original too, because you know, here, even though a lot of bands are like, like fashion bound, there's just some element about them that they're just a little bit original. what they're doing and it's great and you can tell and they sound great too when the singer he's awesome he knows how to play the show they know how to make a good show and that's what really puts them above a lot of other groups the fact that they're actually good probably their style and their performance i think the intensity and the level of skill in the actual performance straight up metal industrial music. As some angel to others was uh, kind of a learning curve for us. We, uh, we were dealing with a producer that was great, knew what he was doing, uh, but you know, as a first record, a freshman record, uh, there were really a lot of things that we were still kind of feeling out about ourselves. Uh, and while we are proud of the record, you know, it, it's, it's one step and one stop maybe on the journey that we've taken to get to where we are today. So uh, certainly without those songs, uh, we wouldn't have learned where we really wanted to be. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Um, you know, Craig Fletcher is uh, more a story, more of a, uh, uh, a little fantasy and frustration. Uh, but I think it's something that people who are tired of hypocrisy can relate to. Um, God Drug is more of an anger fueled, uh, fast paced. Uh, song that once again just kind of more than more than uh, expressing frustration, more expressing anger uh, at the establishment. I think.
Uh, while both songs really uh, got a lot of attention, uh, there are a few other tracks on the record that are my favorites. Um, but those two songs, I think, are the most readily accessible. Um, the song that we get requested a lot at a lot of shows is uh, Christ Fletcher. It was great live. It's a very loud song. You know, honestly, I think that would have to be Mold. That would be my favorite song to play live. It's not one of our heavier songs, but uh, it came from a dark place. So I don't mind revisiting that every once in a while. I, okay, honestly, I'd have to say the line. The line is like one of my favorite ones to play live. Uh, you know, lately I'm really digging uh, the line. The whole breakdown on the line where it's, you know, it just goes to the bass or whatever. You know, with traits on bass, you know, and drone one on drums, it's just, it's so fucking tight, you know what I mean? It just, you just feel the way that it was supposed to, the way that it was like originally intended to be when that song was written way back when, just that sort of, you know, uh, that sort of tight, like, pulsing throb. <laughs> That's the dirtiest thing. It's gonna be in this whole dirtiest sounding thing. It's not. Maybe it is. It's sexy. That part, that, that part of, the, of that song is sexy. It just, it's fun as hell to play. We're gonna be busting it up tonight. These guys are going to catalog everything, so yep. you best behave yourself. We've got right. blackmail in mind. The set went great until Singer lost his fucking mind. <laughs> Exciting, man. We had a basically when I came in, man. We had a show. I played a show within like the first week of me being in the band in Detroit at Harpo's, so it kind of tweaked me out. Then very shortly after, you know, finally it got the uh, right, right, like writing formula and stuff. It's been real good. Very uh, changing experience. We've been uh, in touch with a lot of the A and R. Uh, reps of uh, Full Effect Records for a while. Uh, we went and played a showcase in uh, Detroit, um, where one of the label offices was located. Uh, hopefully the president, like we have to say, uh, he's an artist himself, uh, so he really knew where we were coming from. Uh, the music industry has changed so much and continues to evolve month to month, so his Readily accessible plan for support rather than the traditional label model uh, kind of appealed to us, gave us really creative control, um, and that was important to us. So that's kind of how it came about. Contact showcase. Let's uh, talk.
Well, um, we had some mutual friends that uh, put some touch with one another. Uh, Raymond, very supportive. Uh, and also Jeremy Blair uh, was another producer on the record. Uh, Raymond executive produced. Um, in our first meetings, uh, Raymond said he liked what he'd heard, uh, the first record, etc. And uh, uh, knew that we'd pay some dues, work hard. Uh, Jeremy also saw potential in, in some of the new songs that we had uh, demoed for him. Uh, and they often help us you know, take our production to the next level. Uh, their studio was located in Los Angeles for a year. So uh, we decided to do uh, a lot of the record out there. Uh, we did some of the record uh, at our studios, Catacombs. And uh, uh, this is pre-production here in Chicago, and then out to LA to record the meat and potatoes, uh, make use of their expertise. You know, as, as musicians, you know, we're all about making use of the uh, the experts. And when it comes to tracking the record at the studio and whatnot, you know, that that's that's what they do. That is their thing. So we roll with with their ideas for uh, production. And, we handle what, what we do, is writing the songs and performing. So uh, it was a great marriage, and I think it worked out really well.
yeah, I, you know, we we write the lyrics. Uh, you know, occasionally we'll have some input. You know, throughout, actually come up with some lines here, some input. You know, that's really how we work when we write songs. It's, you know, uh, we all are able to uh, creatively have input with each other's stuff. I mean, that's just how you make it better. I mean, you know, if if my you know well is dry tonight, ask to pick up you know where I left off and maybe you know give me the idea to about where to go or a direction to take something I've never thought of uh, or, or an aspect I was missing. So it's, it's nice to have um, you know, people on board who can do that for you. So the thing that makes it work is checking your ego at the door. You know, we're all you know, equals and we're all creative, talented people who have something to contribute. And, you know, like me, for example, willing to hear, you know, I've got to be willing to hear everybody's everybody's take on something that I'm doing. I don't own the guitar because I'm the guy playing the guitar and say, I mean, this is our man, this is our, our you know, product or whatever. And so, really, uh, then again, when I check my ego at the door, it's usually checking some kind of big soul. It's valuable, so it's hotel safe. He did. You know, Stefan uh, is a real creative guy. He is super technical and uh, savvy and, and detail oriented. So he did the work on the first record. We knew we wanted to use him for the second. Uh, so we dedicated uh, the resources to have him do it. Um, I think even he admits it was the largest album undertaking. He He'd uh, tackle 20 page four color booklet, six panel to pack, um, all the photography, um, all the imagery. Um, I'm a complete bastard to work with when it comes to that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm super picky. I know Aston is super picky. Really, Stefan is super picky. So when you get three of the pickiest people in the room, uh, just dissecting the artwork to make sure it's correct. Um, it took time, but yeah. I think we got it right. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a tough process, but when you get something that can satisfy um, all those people, you know, the, the, when you get something that satisfy the three of us, it's, it's going to be fun to commit. Okay. It is. It's great. We had a specific vision, and we had a vision for each aspect of this record, from the cover to the inside pictures, to the CD itself, to the booklet, everything in there means something. There is meaning and balance and, uh, and stories behind it. Everything in that album art. So, Stefan took what our imagery and message was, and I think he flawlessly translated it into the package. You know, I, I think it, I think not only is it accessible, uh, even if you don't want to get into all the philosophy, but if you are into getting into the meaning behind everything, there is a cornucopia of hidden story and uh, dimensionality to all the songs. So there's a lot to digest. You should just do so, and if not, you can just enjoy it at face value. So I think. In that sense, we really did achieve uh, something special with this record. Yeah, all my favorite music is like that. Where it's, you know, if you want to dig, there's shit to dig. You can, and you can, you know, you can keep finding more and more and more stuff. Right. I mean, it doesn't stop the music; it goes into the artwork. It's all symbiosis. You know, it all it all means something together as a package.
again exploring uh, pretty much Mother Earth getting really pissed off at what we're doing right now. Uh, you know, I'm not going to turn green peas on you or, or lecture, but certainly uh, there can't be any argument that the way we treat our environment affects the end, and that's what the song is about. Clearly. I dig it. I think it's like one of the things I really dig about you know, the lyrics of it is, is the idea of looking at uh, Earth almost as like an entity, almost like it has an intelligence. You know, comparing humanity to a parasite that is like passing on. Doing so, wiping itself clean with uh, you know, tidal waves and hurricanes. It's cool. It's good. Cool. Guess who? Up here uh, on the shelf, but um, I think we should leave them one of the fashion bomb sharpies. Chicago's always been an interesting scene. Chicago's my favorite city on the planet. Um, I was born here, live here. Uh, it's somewhere I think I will always call home no matter where I am. Uh, the metal scene and music scene is it's tough. Chicago is a huge city, just like your New Yorks and LA's. Uh, it's a major stop for every touring musician, and there's a lot of variety every night. Yeah. So to be successful here is to say something about you being able to cut through the masses of music that are out there to choose from, and uh, and really uh, make an impression. Uh, people have a lot of choice, and for them to uh, rally the support behind you, uh, that really says something. So uh, with that, I think we're, you know, we're doing great. We're great for that, that we're able to do that. We have some great venues in Chicago. There's a lot of, a lot of awesome places to play. Okay. Of course. So, Perfect. Q101 is Local 101. I'm Chris Payne, and sitting across the, the, I guess, the studio console from me right now, the crew from Fashion Bomb. How's it going, guys? Hey, Chris. Good. Going good. Very so good. it's been a little while since I had you guys in. Was mm -hmm. it uh, was it before the last CD or somewhere in the middle? I can't remember. I think it was in the middle. We were just getting ready to go out and record this latest disc, and now it's coming right. out. And I think that uh, had the record deal happened at that time, or was it about to happen? It was fresh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool. How's that going for you, man? New, brand new label, brand new CD. Very well. Yeah, everything is uh, brand new, but always onwards and upwards. So. Outstanding. I mean, it's like it, you know, people really connect with it. You know, uh, it's just a well-written album. I don't even do my own horns, but uh, yeah, I think I think it really does achieve what it's supposed to. The audience gets it. You know, it's great. Remarkably, we've heard people say 
uh, Kamala Lester's their favorite, or Bailey Guido's their favorite, or the Rule of Legend Bus is their favorite. There's some people loving the cover. It, it's really been kind of even across yeah. the songs. It's surprisingly, surprisingly very. They're gonna blow up, man. I hope they're gonna fucking get big in the whole United States. They're gonna tour everywhere and they'll be a household name, so to say. See uh, lots of shows and me being at them. I think they are gonna be huge. Maybe Nine Inch Nails big. I think they could do it. They all seem pretty professional. They actually want to have a drive to go someplace. So actually, we see the ones. The Troy Tour is a lot of fun. It's uh, it's just so mean and so angry and raw. You know what I mean? Um, I, I seriously enjoy doing Megiddo. I love playing technological singularity. All of them. <laughs> I like them a little bit. Uh, the Vow. That's that's one man. That's very very good. Vale Megiddo is one of my favorites. Uh, yeah. World Blend with us is always fun too. But. Uh, yeah, like I said, man, it's I kind of like them all, so. <laughs> Bailey Megiddo. Awesome. The Vow. Awesome. Technological Singularity. Awesome.
being unique, uh, having something to say, and being smart. Uh, one of my favorite bands is Tool. Uh, you know, I, I don't need the lyrics that you know might have some unusual word choices, but really don't mean anything. Uh, sometimes you can say something very insightful, very simply. Sometimes it takes something complex. And I like the fans that strike a balance and are able to do that. Uh, it's basically visual. It's a, well, I mean, a lot of visual and then uh, they change their music. Like, it, it's not always the same thing. They evolve, you know what I mean? That's a big thing to me is just bands to where, I don't know, they can get better, more tight. Not necessarily more technical, but change their music to it's not always the same formula, just evolution, man. It's... Originality. Um, it's not, I'm not like stuck in any one genre where I'm all about, you know, it's like, oh, this is what I do, and this is like, you know, because a lot of people, especially like, um, you know, when you're in high school, and I was like this too, they sort of identify, identify themselves with a very specific genre of music. But for me, anything that's original, any anybody who makes a sound that I haven't heard before, Regardless of where it is, or whether it's like, you know, uh, something, somebody that's considered, you know, cool or stylish for like somebody who plays my genre of music, I don't give a shit. It's if I hear something new or something that I haven't heard before, then it'll it'll intrigue me. I like the things that we strive to. Yeah, definitely. We work our asses off, I think, especially, it's definitely one of my big focuses in the things that I contribute to the band. I want, I want to try and do new things. I want to do stuff that has, uh, uh, that's got a vibe to it, that's, that's, um, that has some spirit, I guess? I don't know. It's, it's just something, like, it's, it goes back to the mojo thing I was talking about, where it's just, you know, <clears throat> like, if you, when you're, when you're a baby and you see a tree for the first time, you have no frame of reference for it, and so you reach out, you touch the tree, it's just this thing, and so you experience it for real. Every time after that, after you see that first tree, you don't ever experience it again. You just have this, the only thing you experience is your mental conception of the tree. And so, anything that anybody's ever exposed to that's new does that. You get that, I'm experiencing this for real, I think. And to me, that's why it's so important to really try it, to incorporate that. Obviously, you know, bands like Nine Tails do a lot of that. Uh, Radiohead, I really dig Muse, they have a lot of that kind of thing. That's when we did a, everything on the CD. Yeah, I know. Tell me where you go. Cool, because the guitar's on our Yeah. Like I said, the one of the cabs are a little lower. Uh huh. Dude. You got it up on monitors all set. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Intensity, for sure, power, all of us, yes, everything we have on that stage, every bit of energy that we have, we need it all on that stage. It's, it's no secret, uh, listening to any of the previous stuff that we talked about, that there's a lot of meaning in these songs for all of us. And part of the satisfaction, I think, that we get from playing the songs is conveying that message conveying the meaning of the story and the emotion that goes along with it. So you're going to, if you choose to open yourself up emotionally to it, I feel you'll get a big payoff and reward. If you're there just to bang your head down, you'll get the reward. Uh, yeah, there, there are just so many different levels on which you, I think you can enjoy these songs and we're going to deliver every aspect every night. Marilyn Manson at the Riviera. It's just him and us, and uh, just sold out crowd energy. There was just, you know, one of those uh, behind the music moments. So that's definitely a performance that still today inspires me to perform when I'm out and about. I visualize that one. One of my favorite ones was uh, State Theater Kalamazoo, man. Kalamazoo, Michigan. That was a real, uh, real cool show. <coughs> a lot of people came out. I love it when on a big stage, man. It's like the most, the most fun you can possibly have. And, uh, yeah. That was good.
musically the, the, the feel we're trying to go for is, is um, if you could hear something that felt like desolating. We did a lot of that in this record, trying to trying to, to do um, music that you could hear and you would, you would describe um, a complex feeling, a situation something more complex than uh, happy or sad or rock. You know what I mean? Are sort of the, the easy ones to nail the music. Something, you know, something with some subtlety and uh, desolation of what we have. So you've got these like, everything feels like a charred, blasted wasteland. You can help stage you're more likely to fuck up generally what you want to do is you want to get in you want to get in like a mindset of um 
like basketball players call it being in the zone. Samurai called it uh, samurai, like um, like Zen guys called it satori, where it's like the mind is blank and you're just action. And so it's just, everything should just be happening automatically. If I think about it, I fucking. I really don't know what goes through my mind. I just, I have this like feeling of, I don't know, just really excited and happy. I'm not, like no nerves whatsoever. I'm uh, completely content up there. It's just, uh, it's the best feeling in the world to me. Just running around like a psycho up there. It's good. I don't know. Well, I think that's part of the point of it on the stage show at least is like, that we have, uh, play these songs, and we're so well prepared, and we practice our passes off that we don't have to think on stage. And like without some muscle memory, I mean, that really comes into play. And you don't have to worry about you know what notes are coming next, what parts are coming next. You can just think about you know giving every last bit of energy that you have into your instrument. I mean, you're just you're just confident that you're gonna play it right anyway. This doesn't even enter your head. It's more just. Like, I know I'm going to play it right now. Like, how much ass am I going to kick when I'm playing it right, you know? <laughs> like, how hard am I going to do it? I don't mean to sound cocky. <laughs> it sounded like a very hard. Like to stay. Um, 
you know, it's not that record labels haven't said, wow, you've got the talent to be Nickelback. What do you think? I think you want to, you know, wear some blue jeans and, uh, uh, you know, a white t-shirt and, you know, head out on the stage and play something with formula. Could we have done it? Yeah, but that's really not being true to ourselves. We're just being who we are. Go to the merch booth. Bottom line. Because, uh, no bother moving in. Not yet. Yeah, not just go, go straight to the merch booth because we'll have maybe about 20 minutes for the call leaders to come by and get stuff signed before they have to leave the building. It's curfew at 11 and they're running for about five minutes late. Me, um, my favorite kinds of bands are the ones who are really to go deeper. They go deeper. They they really want to find out everything. They want to find every little last um, bit that the music has to offer. It's in there. They want to know why we have these three basic shapes on the inside of the divisions booklet. They want to know what's the deal with this song. They want to know you know what this song means, what this title means. Um, I like that. I mean, that's something we really appreciate. A lot of fans want to interact. I mean, personally, I'm on, I'm on my Facebook all the time. And when I meet people at shows, I always tell them to look me up um, on Facebook or whatever. And, and I really do like when people send me messages or whatever, and, you know, they tell me what's going on with that musically or otherwise, you know. And, you know, just getting to talk to some new people from all over the country and stuff like that. I, I think that's pretty cool.
When the music first started coming, uh, it suggested a real uh, sludgy, distasteful, uh, foul um, feeling. And of course, that led me right away to uh, exploring the possibility of making it about. Uh, someone that we've known, uh, an ex-member of the band that was really a, a basically an energy vampire, uh, was really uh, kind of bringing the whole process down. Uh, part of Arrow 2.0 really helped us move past that, and you know it was really the best thing to uh, bring new talent on board. Uh, yeah, I mean, we couldn't have done a lot of the things on the new record without uh, moving forward in that way. As anything, it's always an evolution, uh, but that negative energy really did, uh, you know, create some problems, and, and it immediately suggested that that was what the song should be about. success. That's I think that's the main thing they don't think about us. If we weren't doing well, they wouldn't even notice, notice us. I don't care. If our detractors are picking things out about us and spending a whole lot of time studying us, fine. I, I'm not sitting up studying them. We're too busy making music for our, our fans, ourselves, keeping sure our message is being created. Um, I would just say for our detractors, while our creative well is really, really full, you know, you have to look at us. That must mean the ears is dry and try to get some, uh, some inspiration. So, but <laughs> I'm thinking more about what you're doing, not so about what we're doing. I don't care what they're doing, I don't care either way. It's, I think it's to be expected, you know. Um, if nobody hates you, it's because nobody knows who you are. It's, it's business. It's, uh, people have strong feelings about music. Music is uh, um, it's a large part of people's identity, the music that you listen to. So that means you form, you form clicks and clubs. I like this, but this is bullshit. You know? it's, uh, it's my thing, your thing is shit. You know? And uh, so you have to expect that you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes I'll be one of the two. Despite, I mean, it's quite all we've done in the fucking market we love. You know, and, and I've said this over and over, so I'll, I'll repeat myself and say it again. What people really need to realize, and they're so used to it not being this way uh, in life, but 
if you like Chicago Bears, you have to hate Green Bay Packers. It's kind of like that analogy. But in music, you can like everything with no penalty. So a country fan can come to a Fashion Bomb concert and like the music. And no one's going to say, wow, you just insulted country music because you like Fashion Bomb. And vice versa. We all have a great variety of influences that aren't just in metal. And that makes the creative world go around in music, in my opinion. It's looking at what other people do and really taking that. I'm a fan of all music, and everybody else can be too. There's no need, if you like it, if you truly like it, there's no need to hide that. You can like it. I'd like to see more of that. Because there's just, I think there is a lot of. Uh, there is a lot of fracturing in that. I still try to practice drums five, five days a week, two hours a day. That's not stopping. Trying to open my influences. I still try to be the best musician I can be, best performer I can be. The pressure is there to be successful um, for ourselves. Uh, anytime I think that you're in a group uh, that's creative, uh, they they motivate themselves to do better for themselves, and uh, it's that kind of uh, attention to oneself, that selfish detail that I think enhance your creativity and tell it down the road. So I, I would say that there's not really a whole lot of outside pressure where at this point in our career we've got millions and millions of people who are just hinging on success or failure of our next record. But certainly we've got a lot of people who are interested in hearing what we've got to say, hearing what we've got to play. And uh, for that it's not so much pressure, it's just striving to be our best. For my part, I just, you know, kind of work with the band so we can continue to make you know, great music right now, get to it. And um, I think if you, you know, grasp at every opportunity, you know, some things work out, some things fall through, but eventually you have sort of like a, a trend line. Eventually you get your own. You know, if this one thing works out or if this one thing doesn't, um, you know, it's all just like, you know, it's like a, a chart, so like a stock market or something. It has an overall. Yeah, 
the uh, video, the video came out, and I just tried it with a little bit of And then with the, um, the lyrics, the lyrics came out, and then, you know, the experience, and it's very sad, the movie's over, and then it's, you know, I think it's done, the fog is over. Uh, there's nothing left to look forward to. What advice would you give to an aspiring musician? Quit. Uh, no, I was going to say practice. You said quit. Go to med school like your mom said yeah. wanted you to. Practice, practice quitting. Yeah, go to the trade. No, you know what you do? What you do is, uh, for an aspiring musician, you have to be looking to get better every day. Every day, you need to be invested in your instrument, whatever it is you're doing, and your, and your songwriting ability. Figuring out what you're doing to advance it. You're never good enough. You, you need to always be trying to get to uh, to a higher level. A lot of people, I find, uh, and most of the mediocre people out there are people who they hit a spot, and they decided that they were great, they decided that they were a fucking genius, and then just never got better. For years and years and years, they just had the same skill level, the same songwriting skill level, and never got any better. Um, you know, the guys who the guys who have the right attitude and always looking to improve themselves. I was looking for people to be an inspiration. Um, blow by those people. They just blow out of the way. That's my advice. Yeah, if you look at all the best musicians, all of them understand that there are better people than them. Yeah. And there always will be. And if you think that you're the best, you're the best in your town or you're in whatever, if you think you're the best at your instrument, give it a year, give it two years, you will not be anymore. And that's just the nature of the beast. People are constantly practicing, getting better, doing different things, coming up with new, unique ideas. 
and it's just, it's constantly changing. So you have to always, always be improving. And you, know, you really want to be the best. You have to take influences from every walk of you know every style of music. Yeah, it's been your it's been your musical advice. Listen to listen to shit you never would have listened to before and find out um, how you can incorporate that into what you're doing. Yeah, if you like metal, check out some Cuban music and try to do it. Or if you like punk, check out some jazz. Or yeah, all this stuff—it's all related. And it, it all connects in somewhere, and it's just up to you or us or whoever is playing the music to make those connections happen. Yeah. yeah. Complacency equals decline. Yeah. Or if it's not decline, then fucking stagnation. How has being in fashion punk changed your life? Oh, uh, Jesus. Hmm, hmm. that one might take a minute. I'm in Chicago. Uh, <laughs> I'm playing fake venues. Uh, no, man, no, man. It's, it's a lot of good, of good experiences. experiences. And, you know, it's, it's, like, it's like, a, you know, it's all out there later because of the album. You know, it's, uh, it's something I've dreamed about my entire life. It's very fulfilling. And, uh, you know, the time and effort to, to to do that, it's been it's what I spent so much of passion to tell you guys about these guys that are kind of helping me find out my dreams. So, uh, and uh, so I got to see the match for a while recently. So, that went down. It's certainly made a lot of great to You know, when I was uh, kicking around a local band, definitely was trying to like, get noticed. We made some pretty good music, but there's always like, there's always like something missing. Uh, getting involved in this is like the first time I ever had something that was. You know, and then over the years as we refined it, refined it, refined it, it, the first time I ever had something that was like, it just felt like all the pieces were together. And I think it feels like that for everybody too. It's, it's the stuff in the snowball, you're feeling like we're a snowball at the top of the hill. We're finally, you know, we were done pushing it and it finally started to move on its own moment. So, I mean, everything's changing. I got, you know, I'm now spending all of my fucking time, you know, just invested in this project because there's so much going on now. Is there anything you've done so far that you'd have done differently? It's the journey that really makes uh, an influence where you are today. Of course, there are experiences that might not have been pleasant, but I think that anything that we've done up till now has taught us valuable lessons on what it's either to do or to not do. So, uh, I like where we're at now, so I would probably have to say no. Yeah, you get that kind of butterfly effect when you try and like go back in time and tweak something and come back and you know everybody's everybody's got a hit on the stash or something. And it's your fault because you get to take that thing.
stories to say. The road has been long. It's gonna get even longer. But I think that tonight, judging by the crowd that we have uh, upstairs for us and out supporting us, that it is going to be a, a killer show, but a very successful record going into the future. And I'm proud to have all you guys as a part of the bomb and to be musicians and share this experience. And the camera's and rolling, the camera's so of rolling, course, so I yes. feel necessary <laughs> to But bottom line is, really good job, everybody. Honestly, and, and totally, we should start over now. I am. That's right, dude. Alright, world domination out there, you ready? Yeah. One, two, three. World, world domination! domination! Yes. Yeah. 